Let's talk about optimistic add. So over here in this interface, I can add a card and I want this to be optimistic. I want, when I hit the enter key, I want it to like immediately show that and I want to be able to add a whole bunch of them really fast. Let's look at my code right now and uh, we'll, we'll be able to see what it's doing, uh, which is how you might do this in the first place before you add optimistic UI and we'll see what some of the problems are. So um, let's start looking here. We've got a fetcher form. Uh, that's it's we're talking about this little form right here We've got a fetcher form um, if it's not idle then on submit it gets uh, we're, we're preventing and we're not doing anything so that means we're going to only be able to submit one at a time here um, we're adding some client ids that'll be important for the drag and drop video I'm not going to talk about it here and then oops sorry and then here we're saying fetcher submit so this is where we actually uh, submit this form and then we're clearing out the text area right after we submit it. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, if we blur, we just hide it. You can see we're already doing that. And then uh, from there, it's just pretty typical Remix stuff where we've got uh, inputs with values. I, I like to have these, uh, these intense things and I actually try to make all my stuff as type safe as I can with these kinds of things. So if I rename a, 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 a field that my types go crazy instead of just putting strings in here. And then uh, let's see, on key down, um, we just, <laughs> this, this is an old school trick. We say, hey, button, uh, click. And so it pretends like we clicked, oh, sorry. It pretends like we click, click the submit button and then that will send us through the form um, on submit handler right here. It just keeps me from prevent. It keeps me from having to duplicate code in the submit handler and the button uh, or the enter key down. And then uh, that's pretty much it. And we got this save button. It gets disabled when we're not idle, so that they know they can't click it. So let's see. Let's see how this. See how it feels. Um, baby doll. I'm gonna hit enter. Eh. Eh. Not great. Uh, a bit bouncy. But I can do stuff pretty fast. Let's slow down the network and see how it feels. So let's, uh, I'm going to put it down here at the bottom. We're going to see the scrolling action happening too. So if my network's a little bit slower, hello. Yeah, really gross. So this goes disabled, that uh, empties out, and then nothing shows up on my list until it's done. That's when it shows up in the list. And then to get that scrolling to happen, see, because this is a scrollable container, and when I add a card, we don't want to scroll until that new one is added. And so that adds some complexity too. We have to bring in this use effect and be like, okay, is the fetcher idle? Does it have any data? That means I'm done. Okay, on add card. That tells the parent component that owns the scrolling to do the scroll. So um, kind of bummer UX, um, lots of apps <laughs> work this way. Uh, and I can't do stuff quickly. So I'm like, I'm trying to hit enter in there and it doesn't submit because we're preventing it up here. Um, you know, sometimes the user is faster than the network and they're trying to type and add a whole bunch of things. So this user interface is something where we really, really, really want to prioritize the ability for the user to do things quickly and just not even have to think about the network. I'm, I'm putting together my board here. So let's see how we can um, use some optimistic UI here and uh, have these things show up right away and then see what we can uh, what we can change. So the first thing I'm going to do for optimistic add is I'm going to switch from using a fetcher to just submit. So I'm going to bring in use submit from uh, this is from Remix uh, right up here. And I'm not going to do any in place uh, pending UI or anything like that. And we'll deal with this on add card in a second here. Uh, 
I don't need to deal with the pending UI because I'm going to just see it in my list automatically. We're going to put it in this list right away. So instead of a fetcher form, I'm going to use just a normal remix form again. Uh, I'm not going to prevent anything. Like I'm going to allow them to just kick off as many of these as they want, right? As fast as they can type, I will let them send those requests. So let's get rid of that. And then we're no longer doing a fetcher submit. We're just doing a normal submit. Um, and then uh, down here, we can, all that's the same, all that's the same, all that's the same. Nothing else is really different here. Save button, we're not, we're not going to disable this anymore. Because again, I'm, I'm allowing them to just submit as many things as they want to. Um, so now that I don't have my fetcher, I can't do this uh, on add card thing. But I don't have my cards rendering yet, so I can't deal with this part until I actually render uh, these cards. Uh, so let's let's just see how this feels now. How is it? Pretty similar. I just don't have my um, I don't have my pending states that I had before. We basically just removed those, and I'm not getting my scrolling. No scrolling. So watch this. If I hit enter. <laughs> That's really bad. It's down here. You don't even don't even see it. Network is going, network's done, and then you have to scroll down to see it. So we gotta figure out what do we do with this on-add card thing so the scrolling happens too. Let's go over to the board and see if we're getting fired today. Just kidding. Um the board component, so this is the whole screen right here that has all of these um, columns and everything else. So this is where all the data comes from. Uh, it's got a loader where all the data comes from. Ugh, got a beard hair in my mouth. Beards, man. What the heck? Okay. So here's my board. Uh, let's look at the data that's coming back here. We get a list of items and we get a list of columns. And then some information about the board. So our items and our columns are not associated. They just come as separate lists. And that's because with the drag and drop interface, um, we're constantly like recreating what that looks like. The, the database tells us, uh, it, it could tell us, it knows those associations. Um, and that's how we construct it together. But as we're going to drag and drop in, in later videos, uh, you'll see why we have them split up into two different things. So all this code that we're looking at right here, um, got this little type, and then I turn all my board.items into a map of items, and then I turn all my columns into a map of columns. And then here, um, you can see that we just cruise through each one of the items, find the column, and then push the item into that column. And that's how we can get this UI where they all, they all render in their separate columns. So that's, that's it. These, don't, don't get stressed out about what we're looking at here. This is just our database does know these relationships, uh, but because the UI is so dynamic, we actually want a little more flexibility to construct these relationships ourselves as they're dragging and dropping. Not doing that in this video though. That's, that's all that's happening here. Then, um, and then, yeah, you can see down here, all we do is map over the columns and render them. So what we want to do is mess with this call.items. So as we are uh, bouncing through these items and adding them to the column, we want to also have not just these items, but we want the items that are, so down here, you can see this post, we're saying, hey, intent create item, here's the column, here's your order, here's your title, here's the, the uh, item's ID. We know that stuff from Remix going over the network. So we want to grab that from Remix that's managing the state and get it into these uh, columns as well. So what we can do is actually get it into this items array. So we'll first take it from the board. And then what we want to do is get some, get all these pending items that are going over the network and also put them into this map. So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna say my pending items, use pending items. So I like to pull it out of my components into its own separate hook and just kind of put the little bit of mess that it makes uh, outside of here. And if I ever need to go look inside, I can, not a big deal. 
So here is our um, use pending items hook. Um, so we're going to bring in from Remix uh, fetchers. So when we said over in our, oops, let's go to new card. Over here, when we said submit uh, this form data, uh, you know what? We need to do navigate faults on there. When we say this, uh, navigate faults, this is going to now just send off a bunch of fetchers when I uh, create new items. Let's, let's watch it do its thing down here. Uh, fetcher. So you can see we sent these two posts. Those are now going into the use fetchers list if you've used that before in Remix before. So we're going to get all of our fetchers. You know, I'm just going to return this. Then what we want to do is we just want to find the fetchers that we care about. So use fetchers will tell us everything that might be happening. And we saw that we had two of them going over the network at the same time here. So we want to go and find just the ones that we're interested in, just the pending items. So if we look at our uh, form data, you can see that the intent is create item. So that's what we're going to do. Find all the fetchers with an intent of create item. And then we know that those are the pending items. So I got my fetcher here. Oh. And then uh, I'm going to return, um, if I don't have form data, let's return false. We just know that we don't have anything going on. Uh, and then we'll return fetcher.formData get intent. Oh, yes, that's what I want. just to clean it up slightly. And then we're going to map this into an item that we can render, right? Right now it's a fetcher. It's got form data that's going over the network. We can't just render form data. We want to render this form data as though it's one of these things already in the database. So now we're going to map all of these uh, create item fetchers into um, an actual item that I can render. So I uh, actually like to, I have a type here. Oh, yeah, maybe I don't. <laughs> I thought I did. Um, so I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to just pull them all off. So I'm going to say uh, my column ID fetcher.form data get column ID. TypeScript's mad because it's like, I don't know that that has a form data. So let's do a little type trick, type script trick. And uh, let's call it a pending item. This will be return type. Yeah, type of use fetchers, number, sure, zero, whatever. So this is going to be whatever use fetcher returns. Um, but then I'm going to add on there. Also, you have a form data. So I know that you're a fetcher with form data. And then I can tell TypeScript, this is only going to return fetchers that are a pending item. There we go. <laughs> little, little syntax shenanigans. Uh, okay, so now it's happy. It's like, all right, I believe you. There's form data. So we'll get our column ID. So we can see over here all the stuff that's flying across. Intent, column ID, order title, and ID. So I'm going to get all of those things uh, from the form data. And I actually want to turn these into strings because a form data value, here, let me show you. A form data value can be a file or a string, oh, or null, actually. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just going to say, it's a string. We're good. Uh, Get my string here and ID order. This one's going to be a number. Yes, thank you, sir. And then, um, yeah, 
What am I missing? Content is declare. Oh, yeah. I haven't implemented that yet, so we'll just say null on that. So I like to have this type just to like keep me honest. Like, okay, I'm turning the form data into something that normally comes from the database. So what does that thing look like? And then this tells me, uh, well, it's got an ID, title, all that stuff. And then I'm going to return that. And so now I have these pending items, and we can see that it returns a rendered item. So like I said, it's not difficult code. It's just sort of, I don't know, I, I guess it's boilerplate. <laughs> uh, but it's not too hard. Just find the ones that we care about and then convert the form data into something that uh, looks like something from the database so we can render it. So you'll need to put in the form data any stuff that you need to render. So now that we have our pending items, so you check this out, we've got them all. Uh, let's cruise through them. Let, uh, oops, or let item of pending item. So we're going to uh, check if our current items have this one by ID, and if not, we're going to add it, right? So we got all the items from the database, and now we've got the ones that are going over the network to try to go into the database next. And we're going to say, hey, do you have the one that's going over the network yet? Because we have several revalidations going on. So this one, they're, they're, sometimes you can get extra fresh data where uh, when this one is revalidating, maybe this one has already been saved. So we're going to check first if you've got it. So um, if items.has, uh, yeah, item ID. Uh, and that's why this map is super helpful too. Um, then item set, item ID, and then why is this mad? Board ID is missing in type rendered item, but required in there. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna just Push that in there, board ID is, and my board knows its own ID. We could also add that down here into this, uh, the post stuff, column ID, order one, A, blah, blah, blah. But we also know the ID already, so we'll just do it this way. The main point is we're trying to get the stuff that's pending into the stuff that already exists. And I think we're mostly done now. Let's see how, let's see how we do. I'm gonna close this out. Here we go, over here. Oops, <laughs> here we go. So when I hit enter, it should just be there immediately. Hey, it's still a little bit, it's a little bit jumpy. Let's see how we did. Beef, <laughs> Jade wants beef. Do we got a slow network? Yeah. Look at that. It's in there already, just immediately, even though it's not done over here. Now we can go handle this, uh, this scrolling bit back over in our new card, this on add. What do we do here? Um, I personally like to just do it right here. On add card. Um, but we're going to have to do one little trick here. We're going to have to say in this submit thing, we're going to have to say unstable flush sync true. So what this is doing is it's telling Remix, hey, when you update the state, when you put that fetcher in there that we're reading, right, that the, the pending ones that are going over the network, I want you to add that state synchronously so that right after I say submit, I can tell the parent, hey, it's time to scroll because there's a new thing in there. If I didn't use flush sync, then I wouldn't know uh, that it's done and I have to go try to synchronize some stuff and bring in some use effects and try to decide like, oh man, has my set of, of items changed? Or maybe, I mean, I might get it from a different revalidation where someone else added the item and it can be, it can get really difficult. Most of the time I try to do that stuff, I have bugs. So I like personally just to do flush sync here. So I know it's, it's this one specific action I'm adding a new thing. I'm adding a new item right now. And so I want you to do the scroll immediately. I don't want to try to go piece together a bunch of various pieces of state 
to decide, oh yeah, that card that I added over here is now <laughs> inside of my list. Uh, I just want to say, I sent the submission, and now I know it's going to get rendered because I have optimistic UI. Now I want you to render, uh, scroll. And I think we should be done. Should be done. Lovely. Let's uh, have some more room down here. More. I want it to not scroll. No scroll. <laughs> that doesn't have optimistic UI yet. Because I removed it. I removed it. Very cool. Oh my gosh. You see how nice that feels? Feels so nice. Gross pixel bump though. I'm not sure why it's bumping by a pixel. I thought that I got rid of that, but it doesn't matter. But so good. And that's that's how you would want this kind of a UI to feel, right? Like you type in there and you can just do it very, very quickly. Let's let's do it super fast. So even though my here, I'm gonna make this bigger. Let's put the network over here on the right. Clear this out. So we're in uh, fast 3G. And uh, now let's just watch the network going crazy. But I can, I can add things as quickly as I can type. And that's how you want to put together a list, right? When you're thinking like, oh, what, what groceries do I need? Or what am I going to do? Like, what's, what presents do I need to get? If you got like three ideas, you want to be able to type those out. Type those out quickly and not sit there and get interrupted by watching a spinner or a, or a button go disabled. So really, really cool. Um, I know it can maybe look like a lot, but it's, it's not much if you, if you boil it all down. We had this list of items already from the database. Now we say, hey, give me the ones that are pending. This is state, I don't have to track. Remix already tracks it. How do I find those? I bring in use fetchers and say, all right, give me, give me the ones that I care about. Turn them into something that I can render. And then add it to my existing data. That's it. 